because unfortunately I don't have much of a back anymore. Right. Oh, tell me about it. I don't have a neck. Well, I'm there too. Yeah. My, my neck is made up of other people. <laughs> well, I'm not there, but oh. I do have a bad neck. Try four surgeries. That's right. It's so stupid. This one trainer, she would drive me crazy. She would tell me, hold your hands up. I said, I'm in pain. She says, I don't care. You hold your hands up. I said, she says, ignore your pain. And that's what she said to me. Uh-oh. I can have some fun. I'm not going. Well, if you can't enjoy your food at this age, you know, why even be around? They'll have one hit this stop eventually. When it gets busier, they'll have more trucks rotating out of this station. Just the two of you? Uh, we can't beat a good ride through the Harambe or Harambe Reserve. Of course, we don't seem to be moving, do we? I mean to tell you, they are picking them up and laying them down here in Harambe Wildlife Reserve. On the far left-hand side, this is Joe the And we're about to take off. Well, Santa Santa, thank you, Warden. As you say in Harambe, it's one day, which means let's go. Jumbo which means friends, sayonara, sucker. Your safari driver throughout the Harambe while can be seated on your lap, but they too must remain seated facing forward at all times. So please, friends, do not hold your children up in the air, do not stand them up, do not move them around. Safety, they need to be followed throughout the entire this tour. For the sake of the animals out here, if you have any type of food, make sure that's sealed and put away. There's absolutely no eating in the safari of any kind. So the animals we can see here, they have these natural color patterns. They act as a camouflage to help protect them from predators. And that animal we're looking at on the right is known. Similarities are these long prehensile tongues that they have. It acts like a hand to wrap up all of their food. But they also have about 3,000 left in the world today. And those are actually better than some of the other rhino numbers. So white rhinos, just about 1,500 left, and the northern white rhino went extinct just a few months ago. And people hunt them for the horns on their heads. They feel they serve them medicinal purposes. So there's going to be a big focus here. A number of the animals we can meet are going considered critically endangered. We don't want to lose them uh, too much on them right now. My attention is going to be instead on the pink-backed pelicans. Pink-backed pelican water, they do this to keep from overheating. And a hippo actually needs to spend about eight minutes at a time completely submerged. You see some submerging themselves right now. They'll submerge for about eight minutes. So that's really the easiest way to tell apart these babies from their parents, the adult height of their more adult offspring. But the springbok, they get this name because when startled, they spring about six feet in the air at a time. Hours every day. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna use their long prehensile tongues to grab up food. They'll chew it up a little bit. It's gonna move. He weighs about 100 pounds. Females, when they reach adulthood, they weigh between 30 to 40 pounds. And that male has a bright blue and red face that got brighter and brighter. Because he has the brightest face, he is the alpha. On our right hand side, we can also see our first look at an elephant. Notice sometimes if I have the time, I like to bring up some of the names of these animals that we're seeing out here. We've used that knowledge of farmers in Kenya to protect their crops. What they'll do is they'll build beehive fences along their farmlands. This helps keep from six and a half. I say that because when a female elephant is pregnant, push. she will hold that baby in her womb for two complete years oh. for them to survive in the wild. We can do our part to help the elephant. They can go standing on one leg. They actually do that for two reasons. One reason is to help protect the flamingo from predators that may lurk in the shallows of those waters. And that they constantly crash into things. Those are 5,000 pounds of pure muscle. That is not an animal you really want crashing into. Now, white rhinos, unlike their black rhino counterparts, they live inside of herds. These herds, they are known as a crash. It is a nickname they very much have earned. Oh, wait, I already talked about that. Why am I bringing that up again? <laughs> white rhinos, let's talk about them. A white rhino will cover themselves in mud. 
They'll then walk over to these tree lines. They'll scrape off any excess mud that they have to give themselves a nice eating yeah. coat throughout. He's That's going to serve a couple purposes in the heat, but it also helps protect them from various insects. They've also been walking or driving miles per hour. And they can cover between 10 to 16 feet within a single stride while sprinting. Those feet 80 miles per hour. They go from zero to 60 in under three seconds. I've had these white rhinos for quite a while now. So you're probably noticing something about a white rhino. They're not white, they're a gray color. We actually get the name white rhino from animals and every little bit we do counts. In fact, that's what we call this, the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. That word Harambe, it is an African term. It means to come together as much as I could on our conservation efforts. I talk about animals here that are particularly endangered. The whole idea of this tour is to come to for them and to do a much better job on trying to protect them. I know we didn't see it out there, but if you look at your animal spotting guide, we were hunted to near extinction. In the 1930s, there was just 17 left in the entire world. Now, luckily, a local farmer saved the box box for building fence lines around that critically endangered species. We do have those numbers continue to grow and to improve.